One of the most common questions that I get when I'm talking to somebody and they want to know how to improve, they say, Gabriel, how come I'm not attacking as much as I should be? Why am I hesitant? Why am I not letting those hands go? In today's episode, we're going to talk about the possible issues that may be hindering your offense and how you can go about fixing it. Pretty much all the time, it is best for me to be upfront with you guys, and I would be lying if I said this issue which we're talking about today, I haven't suffered from it before. I absolutely have. When I made the transition from sparring in kids class to going to the adult class, I really struggled with letting my offense go. I was very defensive. I did not want to pull the trigger. And then I made the transition from karate in the adult class to karate in kickboxing. And then again, I became very hesitant to let my attacks go. Why is this? Usually it's because we are scared to start punching and get hit back. That's usually the biggest thing. So what we need to do to stop that fear from overtaking us is have a number of solutions and we're gonna go through those right now. Now, although this might seem easy, the very first thing we should be looking at is head defense, overall defense, when we go on the attack. If we are making one of the most common mistakes of punching from down low and not guarding our head properly, then of course we're gonna get countered with pretty much every shot that is thrown at us. That's gonna hit us. We step in, boom, boom. If my hand is down here and they throw the hook, boom, I'm gonna get clipped. So what you can do to build the confidence in your defense, which will then let your hands go because you have that security, is make sure your hands are always up. They don't have to always be up on the outside. It's not like I have to stand there like this all the time. But when I do decide to enter and I start throwing my hand combos, having this hand here as opposed to down here is going to make it so much easier to block. And therefore, you are going to be so much more confident in your offense because you know defensively you are taken care of. The next reason you might be struggling with your offense is you just can't get there. Every time you go to move, you get hit. And then you go, okay, okay, something negative happened there. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to build up the courage. I'm going to go, boom, and you get hit again. Why is that happening? Usually, it's because either you are starting from way too far away and you're loading up or you're not getting your head off that center line upon entry. Both of those can be worked on and dealt with very easy distance is something we absolutely need to understand. If our opponent is right here, and I'm way back here, then when I go to move in, it takes way too long. They're gonna react in a negative way for me. If my range is here, I wanna be just there. So that when I move, it's small, it's fast, and I can be on this guy very quickly. But if I manage to get that down, and I forget, ooh, head up here, even with my hands high, is no good, well then I can make that correction to move the head off the center line as I move forward or sometimes as I move back or it could be when I'm stationary. I can still let my hands go on the first shot, head off the center line, then I can square back up for a couple more and then maybe I can drop my head off the center line again. Learning to recognize that your head does not have to stay right above your hips all the time is gonna give you confidence in entering knowing your head is just not in that spot where your opponent is always going to target. The next reason you may not be wanting to let those hands or feet go is when you get hit, you're taking it right to the nose. I can guarantee you, especially if it's early in your sparring career, you get hit in the nose once or twice and you're gonna get very gun shy. You're gonna get very hesitant to start the attack. You're gonna be more likely to wait and go, oh, he's attacking me, draw back. How do we stop from getting hit Square in the nose, very simple. Tuck your chin. Your chin is tucked. Once your chin is tucked, now the forehead becomes much more of a target. Doesn't mean you won't get hit in the nose, but it's much less likely. If you're fighting somebody at your own height, shots usually come in this direction. They come right towards here. As soon as I do that, now my forehead becomes the target. I very rarely get hit in the nose anymore but I very rarely leave my chin up. 
You can correct this by taking something. It could be anything. Let me grab something right here. You can take this bottle of supplements from Bioptimizers, tuck it right there, and just get used to shadow boxing with my chin tuck, holding something in place. That in itself is gonna help a lot. It could be a tennis ball, it could be a sock that is balled up, and see if you can hold that in place as you do your shadow boxing to develop that reminder that if you lift your chin as you punch, you're re-engaging that nose to be smacked whenever anybody else punches. So draw that chin to your chest. Make sure you're looking more through your eyebrows. That's what we call it. Look through your eyebrows, not straight up. Right through those eyebrows and make your forehead the target. You will be much less gun shy, much less likely to blink or get hit and then back off when you take shots to the forehead as opposed to the nose. Now this might seem very simple, but you can be very hesitant to throw offense if you're going with somebody who is a lot better than you, but is a bit of a jerk, or even around the same skill level, but just sparring way too hard. So remember, and this is something we have to put ego aside, it is okay to ask people to go lighter. I hated doing that when I was younger, and honestly, I don't think I ever did because I wanted to be the best in the gym. And if somebody wanted to go hard, I was like, well, fine, you brought this on yourself. And then I would go hard back. But looking back, terrible way to treat the situation. And I always tell my students now, tell them to lighten up. And I hear many of my students in sparring telling somebody that was too hard. Let's, t let's tone it down. Let's draw it back. Let's have some fun and not try and knock each other out. And this internally, I'm just applauding them for saying that. So that's a reminder, just for everybody out there, a little sort of bonus tip to take advantage of verbalizing what you're experiencing and tell people, pull back a little bit. And the final reason that I want to talk about you being a little hesitant to let your attacks go, last one for today, is you have not developed confidence in your own technique and your own combinations. Maybe you move forward, you throw one, and then you exit very quickly, but that's all you have. Settle down. Let your feet plant once you've entered. We already talked about getting that head off the center line. I push forward, I get my head off the center line, I hit once. Now I dial my weight downwards, and then from there, I can let my hands go while remembering to protect on both sides. If I practice this on the bag, I practice stepping in, boom, 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 and then getting that clean exit, then I will start executing like that in sparring. But if you do not practice that at all in your training or not enough, you don't ingrain it in, make it muscle memory, it's not gonna happen in the sparring and you're gonna feel like, ooh, I just can't do this. But really you can, just take more time to really ingrain those motions and ingrain that entry of multiple shots before you exit, multiple shots before you exit. And then everything else which we talked about before this is just like the icing on the cake to really clean it up. If you can take everything I said today and execute it, you should start pulling the trigger and landing shots in sparring. And yes, there is a learning curve where you're gonna feel hesitant, and you're gonna still feel gun shy, but sometimes you just gotta go for it. And that's basically what I had to do years ago. I had my dad on the side watching me sparring and he would be yelling, you gotta go, go, gotta go. And I remember sitting there being so hesitant and then one day I threw something and I landed it flush. And I was like, oh, I can be offensive and be successful. And it was just like a light bulb for me where I went, this is something I can do. And ever since then, my offense has just taken off and I am so much better because of it. So guys, this is not an easy thing to overcome, but I've given you the groundwork here to hopefully get better on your offense and be a little less gun shy. If you enjoyed the episode, you think it's gonna help you improve, please give the video a like. If you haven't already, join the channel, get subscribed. As always guys, train hard and I will see you back here soon for another episode.